Hey friends, it's Jessie and welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two of my 2022 eyeshadow palette collection video. If you're curious about the look on my eyes today, I did film this look for my Nomad Cosmetics Fête de Provence palette, the three looks one palette video, which should already be up. So I will link that in the description if you're interested in checking it out. But today we are going to be going over my more affordable palettes and bigger palettes. We have lots of ColourPop, lots of Morphe, lots of palettes to get into. So let's get started. Starting out, I have a couple of these palettes that were supposed to be in the last part, so part one, that just didn't make it in. So these are all more on the higher end side of brands. First up, we have the MAC Pretty Punk. I actually really like this one. I love this palette. It's one of my favorite MAC palettes. I have the Too Faced Life's a Festival palette. It is covered in Bruce hair, but this is what this one looks like. It's just kind of a rainbow shifty shimmer palette. The Colored Rain Queen of Hearts, a very popular staple palette from 2017 2018 time we have the kylie nice palette this one i was mentioning in part one i couldn't find it but i did find it it was mixed in with my color pop palettes and i have two of these giant norvina pro palettes so this first one is i believe volume six this one reminds me a lot of like the blend bunny surge palette you have some of those grungier mattes with the pastels and then I also have the Norvina Collection Volume 5. This one is pretty much an extension of the Velvet Cover Norvina palette, so very pretty. I have drawers multiple of ColourPop stuff, so we'll start with some of the bigger nine pan palettes. Sorry if you hear Bruce running in the background. Normally he's not in the room with me when I film, but he is out here today. So first we have the ColourPop in the Limelight palette. This one is very pretty for summer, very green, very beautiful. We have the All Amethyst palette. This one is more of those purples. I really like Sunbird and Amulet. I feel like they're very pretty purple shimmers. We have the Wannabe palette. This one is more of those bronzy colors. I don't really know why I got this. It's just a basic warm neutrals palette. By the Rosé, more of the standard berry tones. Sprinkle a little magic which is the collab with Tinkerbell. I actually really like this one. I reviewed this on my channel last year and it is still one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. This is the Golden State Warriors. This is one of their NBA inspired palettes. I got this because I really like the color story. I've never watched basketball, so I don't really know any teams aside from like the Lakers, but I liked the color story of that one. And then I also have the Mavericks palette, which is a very pretty icy palette. Shifting my camera angle a little bit, so hopefully this looks a little better, but I have a ton of the nine pan palettes. Let's go ahead and just get into them. So first up I have In a Trance. I really like the color story of this one. I'm obsessed with the pastels. They did this pastel collection, I wanna say in 2020, it was during the Panini. And um, I really like the all three of these palettes that was in the collection, the Aura and Out. This one is so pretty. I love the matte white in here. Miss Bliss, this is definitely the most neutral and wearable of them. Then I also have the Lucky Penny. This is a deeper bronze palette. I don't know, every time I see warm neutrals or bronzes, it just kind of gets my makeup. My makeup sense is a little tingly. I am very into those bronzes. We have Strawberry Shake. This is more of pinkies with a little bit of neutral in there. The Main Squeeze palette, which is red. This was, I think, one of their first monochromatic palettes. I remember when this came out and everybody lost their crap. Wine and Only. This is those deeper reds and berries, kind of maroons. And last but not least for these nine pans, we have the Orchid You Not. This one is so pretty. I'm obsessed with this shade of all purple and I love the packaging color. I have this little Morphe 9 pan palette that I typically keep with those ColourPop ones. So this is the 9N About Last Night palette. I have since decluttered all of my mini Morphe palettes, but I like this one. I believe it was a holiday launch from like 2018 or 2019. Next we have the softer cover 9 pan palettes. So up first for these softer covers, we have the Hello Kitty and Friends. This is the Snow Much fun palette. If you saw my project level up intro, you probably saw the shade E out of its pan. We have the Frozen 2 and Anna ColourPop palette. This one is so fun. This has also seen some better days. I've been working nonstop on this palette. She's got Solstice, one of my older nine pan palettes. I have Cherry Crush. I went through a phase where I was obsessed with red eyeshadow and I like the different rows and different tones of red in this one. I have the Fine Feathered palette. This 
one's just mauves and pinks. This is the Frozen 2 Elsa palette. Out of the two Frozen palettes, I actually like this color story more, but I tend to pull for the other one more than this one just because it's been in so many projects. But this silver shade, gorgeous. And then which one is Gale? Gale is this one. It's like this shifty shade. You can see all my swatches from Ulta today. This is such a pretty shade. This is the High Tide palette. It is some really pretty teals and aquas. Lock it down. This one I probably didn't need. I don't even think I've used this one, but this was an Ulta exclusive for a while and it is purples. It kind of reminds me of the Orchid You Not just with some more cool tone neutrals. We have That's Taupe, which is just a very standard cool tone palette. I really like this one. Lil Ray of Sunshine. This is all mattes. For the most part, I believe, yeah, they're all warm toned mattes, just a basic mattes palette. The Ornate, this is a reddish yellow. It kind of makes me think of Gryffindor from Harry Potter. Grandeur, this is cool tones with kind of like a hint of glamour to it. I really like these shimmers over here and this deep, deep green is so pretty. The Baroque palette, I really like this one as well. These are those cooler toned blues. It kind of reminds me of the Maverick palette I showed earlier. I have the child mandalorian palette i really really like this one i thought these were so well done the darth vader palette i love this one as well this red is gorgeous and i just find these colors so fun to work with and then i also have the mandalorian palette this one is super pretty i haven't used this one yet but it is on my list to do so next i have more of my bigger color pop palettes so bear with me there's a lot to get through this is the through my eyes in collaboration with i love sarah e this one is super pretty it's just those really rich warm jewel tones mesmerize is literally to die for the malibu barbie palette this one has been chewed on by bruce a little bit but i love this color story i took this on a trip to reno for a month and i really like it we have the midnight masquerade palette this one is another staple in my collection or at least it was for a little while the mulan palette probably my least favorite of the different collab palettes i own i just find the color story not too inspiring i like the reds but it just kind of messes with me having all these cool tones next to some reds and i just i feel like it's kind of just a little basic the misunderstood has a literally all the beautiful shimmers you could ever want it has the crazy reflective packaging so hopefully you can see the tones all right but i love diablo forest of thorns and facile down at the end they are just all so pretty. Garden Variety is one of my older ones that I definitely want to reach for a little bit more. I'm thinking about pulling this out in my August Shop My Stash. It is just so pretty and I'm obsessed with these purples and I'd really like to use some of these warm neutrals a little more. The Star Wars palette. I have been very open about loving this palette. It has just been so fun and it has definitely been one of my favorite releases so far of 2022. I think it was so well done. The color story is so inspiring and the packaging is just gorgeous. I also have the Hocus Pocus Gather Round Sisters palette. I really like this one for grungy looks and it's laid out so easy that you can just put together looks with rows or get a little more creative and pick and choose. I have the In the Springs palette. This one is newer. I haven't gotten to use this one yet, but I love the oranges and aquas together. It's so pretty and the packaging is so gorgeous. This is the ColourPop and Avatar The Last Airbender palette. So it has Aang and Momo on the cover and then it has all these pretty colors this one i feel like they should have added a couple more green tones instead of having neutrals for the earth kingdom row but other than that i feel like it's really nice i i would have liked to see some bolder shimmers these are very soft shimmers and not so much like metallic shades and i would have preferred to have like a metallic or two but personal preference i have the lemoncello palette this one is italy inspired i believe we have the powerpuff girls collab palette this one is gorgeous i'm obsessed with super friends which is blue shimmer ticket to dreamland this was an ulta exclusive holiday palette last year so 2021 this one has more of the jewel tones in it and then the companion palette to that one was on a whimsy and this is more of those lighter everyday tones with a pop of aqua i also have the one and done palette this one has been a very much loved palette this year i have a couple more and by a couple i mean several 
of the soft cover ColourPop palettes. So the first one I have is Candy Castle. This one has a broken shade, hence why it's off to the side because I am notorious for not repressing broken shades right away. And then I also have the Secret Admirer, which also has a broken shade that needs repressing. So I just kind of leave these off to the side until I get around and repress all the broken shades at once. This is the Sweet As Can Be Winnie the Pooh palette. This one I have not used yet, but I really like the color story and I like to collect the ColourPop collabs. The Hocus Pocus Witching Hour palette. This one is very fun color story and very inspiring, especially around Halloween. I have the original My Little Pony collab. I can't remember if they've done one since, but this is one of their older collabs. I can't remember when this came out, but it is definitely not available anymore. It's seen better days. This was before they started printing the shade names in the palettes. That's how old this is. I have the Lizzie McGuire What Dreams Are Made Of palette. I really like this one as well. These colors are so fun together. Boudoir Noir, which is these grungier tones, some olive and warm neutrals. At Forest Sight, this is in collaboration with Raw Beauty Christie and still one of my favorite color stories that has ever come out. Off Melrose, this is such a fun color story. You have some of those really intricate neutrals. I like like these duochromey shades and the glitter. I know a lot of people don't like the glitters, but I think they're fun for a pop of sparkle. Sonic Bloom is another one of those fall palettes. This kind of gives me original gingerbread spice by Too Faced vibes. Butter Me Up has more of these brighter pinks and purples with some silver, so it's kind of like a pink purple and cool tone neutral palette. Lush Life is this beautiful jewel toned piece of art right here. I have the Zodiac, which is in collaboration with Kathleen Lights. This one I don't really reach for all that often, but I do like to keep it in my collection because it is one of my older palettes. The Nightmare Before Christmas collab. This one was bittersweet. I felt like there's so much more that they could do to go in the direction of Nightmare Before Christmas, but I still love it anyway. Nightmare Before Christmas is one of my favorite movies, so I love it. Rendezvous. This is another older palette by ColourPop. It was an Ulta exclusive in 2018. I have the Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian palette. This one is so nice for just a wash of color. It gives me like K-beauty realness. I have this singles palette. This has all of like my Coachella type shades. So I have four neon pigments and then eight pressed glitters. And this one I reach for when I want a little bit more of like a festival vibe to my makeup. I have the Wild Nothing, which is just a very light wash of color type palette. And the last one in the 12 pan palettes is the So Very Lovely. This one is so pretty. I love the lavender. I'm so happy that pops of lavender are coming back into style. I have four of the mega palettes. So this one is the Stone Cold Fox. I actually really, really like this palette. It is so pretty. I love the cool tones. I'm a cool tone gal through and through. I do like my warm neutrals, but I prefer cool tones on myself. It's a Mood is, again, one of those super unique color stories that I can't get enough of, especially in the fall time. You have those grungy neutrals, but you also have like the warm neutrals. You have some berries and neutrals, some greens, blues, purples. Like there's so much you can do with this palette. Rock Candy was one of those impulse purchases I made at the beginning of the year when this came out. Honestly, I don't think I needed it because it's very comparable to the Stone Cold Fall box but you know I have no self-control and they play it jewel palette this one is so pretty this one is gorgeous I love all the crazy fun colors in here I really wanted the so jaded palette that was in collaboration with Kathleen lights but I never got around to purchasing it before they discontinued it so I feel like this is a good replacement for that and now I have a lot of these <laughs> little mini palettes so first up is the take me home this is a little six pan palette from that very brief moment in time glitch in the matrix where color pop was in sephora for like one holiday season the flower palette from the bambi collab this one is very pretty plum shades the bambi palette from the bambi collab this one is those warm golden neutrals and the thumper palette from the bambi collab this is the cool tone neutral palette from the collection i have two of the little quads from the sure thing collection so the first one is wait and see this is those very pretty aqua shades. I love this palette. This is one of the cutest colorful quads I own in my collection. And then this one is Sure Thing, which is more of those pinky peach shades. I have the little Animal Crossing collection palettes. The first palette from this collection I have is the What A Hoot, which is the Blathers. And I believe the little red owl is named Celeste. 
This is the neutral quad. I also have La Belle of the Ball, which is the purple one with the Able Sisters. Five Star Island, which has Isabel. And the last quad from this collection is the Nook Ink quad, which has the aqua shades. I have lots of five pan palettes. So the first one I have here is the Melt For You Quint. Is that what the five pan palettes are? This one is from their Valentine's Day collection, I believe last year, 2021. I have five of these that came in a bundle and I can't remember what the bundle was called, but this first palette is all a flutter. This is more of those bronzy coppery neutrals on a wing, which is more of those cool tone plummy mauve neutrals. Social Butterfly is more of a blue and neutral little palette. Fly Away is a more of cool toned olive palette. And Over the Cocoon is the reddish maroon palette. This one is the Just a Glitch palette. I really like the color story of this one. It is so fun. It was from their Y2K collection. Also from that collection, we have Digital Playground. This is pinks and corals, very beautiful. And then there's also this one, which is New Millennium. This is all over my thumb apparently. This is the pinky purple palette from the collection. I have the Make It Fearless little quint. This was from the Make It Black campaign a couple years back. This has some really pretty bold colors. I already have the shade Ooh in a single, but other than that, I don't think I have any of the other shades. I have the two palettes from the Jasmine Chiswell collection. So the first one is Such a Starlet, which is the pinky palette of the two, and Hello Hollywood, which is kind of that old school, cool tone, glamorous palette. That should be all of the ColourPop palettes. Now we can move into my other affordable palettes. So I have two of the little bites Size quads by e.l.f. The first one is in the shade Rosewater, which gives me Naked 3 vibes. And then I also have Truffles, which is this neutral palette. I had these in my work bag, my work makeup bag for the longest time because as a hairstylist, it is definitely recommended you wear makeup to work, but they are just so quick and easy and simple, I couldn't resist. I have the Wet n Wild Ohana palette, which is in collaboration with Lilo and Stitch. I actually have a shattered shade down in the corner, so I'm not gonna open it because I don't wanna spill it everywhere. It's already spilling out, but this is the Ohana palette. I have the Caring Counts, which is the Care Bears collab palette from Wet n Wild. I really like the colors in this one. I feel like it's such a fun rainbow palette. And last from Wet n Wild, we have the Nautical Nonsense, which is their SpongeBob collabs. Is it obvious that I like collab palettes? Who would have guessed? This is the I'll Be There For You by Peachy Queen. This is their Friends inspired palette. I haven't heard much about Peachy Queen. I'm not sure if they're still in business, but I really like the bright colors of this one. It's just a little bit confusing looking at it and trying to piece together looks, but I do like shades individually, like this bright pink and the bright green and the coral like there's a lot of fun individual shades it's just a little bit confusing trying to piece looks together as a cohesive palette i have this palette from bh cosmetics it is the weekend festival palette this one again is one of those a little bit more confusing palettes but i do like to reach into it for specific shades this one probably should have been roped in at the beginning with my higher end palettes this is the violet boss flamingo but I keep it with my Juvia's Place and other palettes just because I don't really reach for it all that often. And it's big and colorful, so it fits right in with these other palettes. My only remaining Juvia's Place palette is the Zulu. I have since decluttered nearly every Juvia's Place palette that I've owned. I just found myself not reaching for them. They are super, super big. The pan sizes of these are huge, especially the older ones. The only reason I kept this palette opposed to the others is because I do like the colors in here. I like the yellow, I like the teal, I like the rose gold. So I like to reach in for this specific palette, but the other ones I just wasn't reaching for. I have the Bright Lights by Pinky Rose. This is such a pretty neons palette. I purchased this when Riley Rose stores were still a thing. I'm not sure if they still have Riley Rose stores. I miss them dearly but they had a ton of pinky rose indie makeup. And then I have this one from NYX. This is the Avant Pop in the shade Nouveau Chic. One of my first eyeshadow palettes. I wore this in high school all the time and some of these shades are very well loved. I'm gonna go ahead and go through my remaining Morphe palettes. I have again decluttered most of my Morphe palettes just because I don't reach for bigger palettes. Like 
35 plus shades. They just don't make sense in my head. But I have the Maddie Ziegler collab. This one, the shade Godmom is absolutely gorgeous. Let me go ahead and swatch that. Like it is the most pretty wet shifty shimmer shade. It's a perfect one and done or just topper over a neutral look. I have the Morphe and Coca-Cola Thirst for Life palette. This one is very fun. Reds, cool tone neutrals, warm tone neutrals. It has a little bit of everything in my opinion. The Morphe and Sour Patch Kids palette. This one was an impulse buy. I don't think I needed this. I've used it a couple times. It's nothing special, but for whatever reason, I liked the idea that they collabed with Sour Patch Kids. Not my finest moment. I have the, this is the 25L, I believe. It doesn't say on there. Oh, on the top. 25L Live In Color Palette. This was one of their first Pride palettes and to this day is still my favorite rainbow palette. I'm obsessed with this. It just has everything I could possibly want. If I want to do a colorful look and I don't have a specific palette in mind, I typically will reach for this one. I've done so many fun looks with this palette and it is still a fave. I know I said I don't typically like the bigger Morphe palettes, but this one got me. This is their new 35A Up Till Dawn Artistry palette. And this has pinks and greens and blues, and it's just so pretty. I actually really, really like this palette, and I'm ashamed to say that because I've been so adamant about not purchasing big palettes. The original Jaclyn Hill palette, I do have the very original formulation of this one. It is extremely old by now, I'm sure and it's not as well loved as other people's Jaclyn Hill palettes are. I know a lot of people really, really liked this palette and I enjoyed it. I just don't think I was on the hype of this palette like most people were. At the time that I purchased this, I thought it was really nice to have just about everything you could want in a palette, but now I find that there's other brands I prefer, other shades I prefer. And then I have the 35B palette from Morphe in their older packaging. This isn't even the oldest. I used to have the really old original with the big red M. I have since decluttered most of them in the plastic packaging, but again, I couldn't bear to part with this one because it just has all those rainbow colors. And I really like using this one, especially during Pride Month for my Pride looks. The last brand of palettes I wanted to talk about in today's video are my Jeffree Star palettes. I know that Jeffree is not everybody's cup of tea. I completely understand and respect that. So I will just let everybody know here that from here on out, the rest of the video is only gonna be my Jeffree palettes. So if you've made it this far, feel free to exit out if you don't prefer to see this section of makeup. Completely understand. Um, but I'm gonna just jump right in. So first from Jeffree, we have the Mini Breaker. This one is such a fun fall palette. I am obsessed with this palette and actually looking at it, it's making me wanna use it so bad. Like, uh, do you ever just like look at your palettes and just immediately get inspired? I have two areas where I keep my Jeffree singles. So the first is this 88 Pan Adept Cosmetics Singles Palette. So I have a row of Jeffree Singles down here. I also, I'm trying to like hold this up because it's such an awkward angle. This is all ColourPop and then these are ABH and I think Ulta Beauty, but I just thought I would include this because there's a lot of Jeffree Singles. Then I also have this Nine Pan Singles Palette by Jeffree Star that I put together. He always includes single shadows in his mystery boxes and I do like to do unboxings of those on my channel. And this is the little Nine Pan Palette I created from some of those singles. So I believe most of these are from Cremated, Blood Money, and the Weirdo Palette. I have Star Ranch, which is this really pretty blue and neutral palette. I actually really enjoy this one. It's such a fun color story. I have both versions of the Mini Controversy. So the first one is the original version of the Mini Controversy. I really like to use Cry on My Couch as a setting shade, and I'm thinking it's going to be my next focus setting shade when I'm trying to pan a setting type shade. Literally, there's dog hair everywhere. Perks of owning a long-haired dog, am I right? I also have the Mini Controversy Emerald Edition. So this has that really pretty emerald shimmer and when I tell you this is such a pretty green like guys it's amazing and I also have the weirdo palette by Jeffree I still have one of these available up on my Poshmark if you want one I did have a couple of extras and I am down to one left I have the androgyny palette by Jeffree Star this one is my first Jeffree palette and honestly I don't really reach for it I don't like the formula as much as his new formula but I do like certain shades in here like safe word and military I think are beautiful and I also have 
the Beauty Killer 2 palette. This one is so fun. My mirror is falling off on this, but I do really like the colors in here. I have some of the bigger flat palettes. Up first, we have the Banana Fetish palette. This one is so pretty. I love the color selection in this. I actually reviewed this when it came out, and to be honest, at the time, I really didn't like it. In fact, I'm pretty sure I gave it a negative review and suggested just about anything in the collection but this palette. But since that review, I do find myself actually reaching for it quite a bit, especially for this shade, like Never Bitter. And I also like Cream Pie and Just the Tip. I just feel like they're such pretty yellow shades. This palette's starting to grow on me, if I'm being honest, don't tell anybody. I have the Cremated palette. This one was one that at the time when this came out, I really was not impressed with it. In fact, I was very let down. But now, since I've really embraced kind of those grungier, deeper, smoky looks and cool tones, I am obsessed with this palette. I love these shades. They have a super black black, a super white white, just about anything in between. It's a really nice palette, especially if you want to do like an all grungy silver look. We have the Thirsty palette. Again, not my favorite formula from Jeffrey. I very much prefer his newer formula, but this one is discontinued and I will never part with it because I have a thing for limited edition slash unavailable makeup. We have the Jawbreaker, another very well-loved palette in my collection. We have a pan and orange juice, my favorite orange shimmer. I have a lot of wear and tear on some of these shades. Virgin, this white is super, super loved. It has just about anything you could need in a rainbow palette. And everybody's favorite palette, I'm not actually sure if I'm allowed to say this word on YouTube, but you get the point. This is an all matte neutral palette. And then I keep the rest of my bulky Jeffree palettes in this basket under my shelf. So up first we have Pricked. This one I have not used yet because I just purchased it when there was a sale, but this has those orangey red colors. It's very pretty. I just have not gotten around to using it yet. Pink Religion. I actually have reached for this one a couple times this summer and I do really like it. It just stains my eyes really bad. So. I try not to, to use it on days where I know I'm gonna have something the next day. I have my limited edition or anniversary edition blood sugar palette. This one is in the white packaging. I actually got this one before I got the actual or the standard version of the blood sugar palette but I really like the white packaging on this one. And then I have the standard blood sugar palette. This one I got, I believe in my Valentine's Day mystery box unboxing. This one I tend to reach for more now. I like the white background more because I feel like it makes the colors make more sense in my head, but I find myself using this one more because the white packaging gets so dirty so quick. We have the Conspiracy palette with Shane Dawson. This one is a well-loved palette in, in my collection. I really like this palette and Whenever I find myself reaching for it, I feel like I'm trying to push myself to create new color combinations and looks. So I feel like there's always inspiration to gather from this palette, even if it's a little bit more of a confusing color story. I have the Blue Blood palette, another one that at the time of launch, I wasn't really interested in, but now that it's been out and I have it, I'm very glad I picked it up. And I find myself reaching for this one quite frequently. I have the Blood Money palette. This one is greens and greens gorgeous and I'm obsessed with it. I really like the shades in here. Money Heist is one of my faves. Poison Ivy, Chameleon Fetish. I really like Heavy Weighted. There's just so many fun greens in here and I didn't realize how much I liked green eyeshadow on myself until I purchased this palette. I have the Alien palette by Sir Jeffrey. Oh my gosh, I just accidentally disconnected the mirror. Oh wait, that's not even the mirror, that's this broke that. Love that for me. But this one is such a fun, grungy color story. I really like it. And out of all of his palettes, I would definitely say this is my favorite. And the last palette in my collection is Miss Bloodlust, which is the purple shades. I love the purple tones. This has some very unique formulas with these shimmers, and I am obsessed with these lavender shades as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to know if we have any palettes in common. So let me know if you have any of the palettes that I have and what your favorite palette is. I would love to know. So let me know and I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye friends.